Hello everybody, my name is Prince Boss, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Last time, we finally left uh, Cosmos Cabin, and we finally are moving out into finding out what is going on in, on this boat, and finding Cosmos Killer. We also found out that Cosmos next door neighbor, Miss Pavlova, Try to hide herself, and she also was hiding a certain special pet in her suitcase. So we're about to find out what's going on. So let us get right into it. In three, two, one. I like how fast it loads up. So let's talk with her. What happened last night? Did did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man who died. He was a friend of mine. Oh. That's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example? Perhaps people talking? Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest. Perhaps its steam engine exploded. Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed that if that noticed if that happened. I can't read. I'm sorry, guys. Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they should they would find me. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. How convenient. You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The Norwich Ballet? Yes. I am traveling to Great Britain. And from there, I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget? A challenging for pop proposition. When you have that striking tiara as a remember as a reminder. But the tiara is mine. I needed to live. I have no money of my own. The Norwich Ballet gives us only a little food and water. And we must dance all over the world. Damn. Communism, guys. This is what happens when we have socialism and communism. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself? Yes, and the crew of this ship. They have all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they said I could hide in this cabin. And that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova. It creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. What do you think about what do you think about it, Mr. Narhoda? Me? Oh, well, yes, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. What conundrum, I'm not sure, but Uh let's talk about your friend first. So the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board according to the rules of passage. I know, I'm getting her voice wrong. It should be more high-pitched, I'm sorry. I'm just not feeling it today. Oh please, don't tell. Don't tell any of the crew. If they found my precious... Then the burly Russians would bestear themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah! So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. But what sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? Is it? Isn't it? No, it's not a dog. Kitty? Maybe an adorable little rabbit? No. A kitty? Huh! You credit Russia with a, as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh, don't they have small rabbits there, then? You may well ask. I have no idea. Of course you don't. Uh, 
You two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken. Really? So, wow, that was definitely not her voice. I'm sorry. Really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call. Daily fresh eggs. And, when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of, of sustenance. So you use your friends. I'll remember that. Nope, not a chicken. Well, it would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. <laughs> uh huh. She obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. There's something I should like to show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light on it. Let me ask about the conundrum first. Miss Pe Miss Pebalua, allow me to pose you pose you a riddle. Wow. According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. But did we stop last night? However, the SS Burya stopped in no port last night. Ah, that's it, of course. So how was it, pray, that you come to be aboard? That is a good question. Now that I think about it, the crewman outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. Oh, we're going back to his voice? Fuck. Beef Stroganov. That is not your business. Oh, okay. That was just... Bad line. Good. Yeah, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Sorry? What was that? This is how the Russian newspapers described one of my performances. And that is how I came here, too. I descended from the heavens, because I am an angel. Ah, uh, uh-huh. Good way to hide it. Considering English isn't your mother tongue... Oh, sorry, it's Rinosuke. Might be. Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Mr. Shelms once said, I never could rest a touch of this dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova. Miss Pavlova is the same. I keep saying Pavlova. It's not Pavlova, it's just Pavlova. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the detection. Words once said about my son. I quote from a wonderful extravagant ad advertisement for the adventures of, of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. Right. Yes, yes, Mr. Showy. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova's gonna tell us what really happened. Alright. I wanna see what I can do about that real quick, because... Oh. Uh, okay. Don't touch. Huh? I will tell you what I know about last night. But please, you must not touch my things. I, how do you say, forbid it. Oh, sorry. Well, as you should be, young man. What vulgar manners you have. Poking around in young lady's private belongings. Neither, I, neither shall I allow it. Uh, hypocrite. Alright, so I can't do anything. Got it. Not until I gain her trust. So I have to show her something. Uh, the Speckled Band. This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary? Yes, and he wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then a few minutes later 1.35 a.m. It looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? Because the vent, but the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin. You see, it's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh. 
Miss Pavlova? Has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band Victor dimension mean something to you? Or the whistling sound, perhaps? No. I don't know anything. Oh. Is she hiding it? Is she being blackmailed? That's a big possibility. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we're not supposed to be in here. Excuse me, Mr. Roylock. Oh, fuck. Uh. Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once. Please. Alright, I will come now. What? You must leave. No. Oh no, it's fine. Don't mind us. Yes, please, don't worry yourself, Mr. Roylott. Get out! Oh, sorry. Get out! The passenger said out, or do you want me to throw you out? Uh, it looks like we're, we'll have to leave investigating this cabin until later. What a pity. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. Oh, wow, okay. I could have just continued that little bit from last episode and gotten to this to-be-continued to part. Fuck! Ah. Well, it seems that, uh, we'll just continue on from here. We'll save and then, uh, continue. Part two of the investigation. Uh, so that was an interesting little conversation. Interesting indeed. Finnery 9th, SS Berea, first class cabin passageway. I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. I wish we managed to find some clues as to what that speckled band must be. We didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine... Uh... We won't be able to for a long while. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. Wow, his shirt is small. He's clearly glaring at us, as if to say, don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Where did he go? Oh, yes! He's completely disappeared! When did he do that? Slipped away as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring these were securely back on my wrists. Uh, so there's nothing else to examine, is there? Over here. Anything new? That door leads to the second class area. It's locked. I can't open it. No, well, that stands to reason. No one wants to let the murderer escape. Gosh, she gave me a very stern look when she said that. Yeah, there's really nothing we can do. Uh, move. I guess we gotta go back into, uh... Cosmos Cabin. Uh, he's moved out the way. Anything missing or awry? Doesn't look like it. It looks like they're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject. I wonder if Inspector Hosunaga is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, Naruhodo-san? Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of this cabin to investigate? That's... yeah. He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he lay his life on the line for you. Oh, yes. But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. 
never know. So, do we leave now? Again? Uh, no. Is he in the room? Oh, there he is. Oh! Uh, that doesn't look good. Oh, fuck. He's beat up. Ah, you're back. I Inspector! What happened to you? Your face is... Please, don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Made by a bear, maybe. When I told the captain not to give you permission to investigate, he told me he'd pummel me with his fist and then toss me overboard. What? But the pummeling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. Looks like he wasn't joking when he said he'd lay his life on the line if he had to. Well, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little bit about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh! I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like Airlock Schultz. I don't think he was German. Ah, that explains it. Shall we compare notes then? Oh, it's this. Rinosuke. Shall we compare notes then? Uh, we can tell you what we found out. Yes, let's do it. Alright, the cabin next door. What? Nikolina Pavlova? She's in the cabin next door? Oh, do you know who she is? Please, what self-respecting ballet fan would know that graceful angel? <laughs> Oops, I think I upset him there. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case, at least. Oh, how? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? <laughs> Oops, now I've definitely upset them. Inspector, has your investigation in here proved fruitful? If I'm honest, there's very little more I can do. Our duty is to make sure the scene isn't disturbed. Ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So I'm just keeping watch here. Trying not to make take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, there is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Oh, what? Yes, do tell us, Inspector, please. What is this new information you have, Inspector? It is... it's this. The, the Burya's medical officer has finished his examination of the body. I managed to obtain the report. Oh, Cosmos post-mortem report? Kazuma-sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cerebral vertebrae. That's what's written in the report. His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. There were no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it, as it turns out, they found no trace of poison in the system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Ants. Nothing has been found as yet. But the fact that there are no signs of a wound suggests it may have been a blunt object. Something that wouldn't leave a mark. Oh, I see. Oh, the body's nerves run through the spine to the brain. A strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. It is a possibility, and no obvious wound would be left. Poor Kazuma. I have a second copy of the report. If I'm, if it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I trust you. See, Sasato? Trust me! After all, if I didn't trust you... I'd never have agreed to let you leave in this cabin in the first place, wouldn't I? Ah. 
Yes, Asato. Trust me. There are no traces of external injury or poison. Okay. All right, tell me about the great detective. Oh, Mr. Sholmes was here, was he? Yes, he seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept about on the floor investigating. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, now that you mention it, yes, just one thing, but he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish. That's all he said. Shoe polish? I wonder what he meant. It was when he went over there, by the broken piece, by the piece of broken glass. Do you see? Ah, perhaps he was talking about this brick-colored mark. Oh, Sasato. Ah, yes, that must be it. I don't read the names before I start speaking. I just assume. And I'm usually right. But how could Mr. Sholmes know that's shoe polish? That leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is this Asado-san? Well, Kazuma-sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan heel. Dark tan? A sort of dark brownish red, then. Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Oh! Does that mean... Is that... That... That this mark was made by the polish on Cosmo's shoes as they scuffed on the floor? Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. That's really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, that might be for the best. Thank you. <coughs> Poor Inspector. You look exhausted. Oh, no. Well. I feel terrible that I failed to protect Sogi-san. It was my responsibility. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You are his friends. The truth is... I seem to have had a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. Same here! A heavy head? That's interesting. My head's still throbbing, too. Even after all that dancing around, your head hurts? Uh, so I don't know what else we can really do here. Uh, let's investigate the desk again. Where Cosmo spent his final moments, writing his diary. 1.23 a.m., I can hear a faint whistling sound. 1.35 a.m., what looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Looking at his writing here on this page, it's almost impossible to believe that he's gone. Kazuma-sama left us a valuable clue in these words, I'm sure of it. We have to solve this mystery, Narahodo-san. We will. Anything else? I can inspect the grill again. So this ventilator joins to Miss Pavlova's cabin. Yes, that's right. And just a few minutes before he died, because Kazuma saw something emerging from it. The speckled band, as he described it. If only Miss Pavlova had been able to shed some light on it. But she seemed as baffled as we are. Yes. I wonder if she's telling us everything, though. I'm not sure. I know most people aboard would say the same thing about me, but... There's something about that woman that didn't sit right with me. Interesting. Anything new to inspect here? Yeah. So it's clear that these letters were written in the ink that was somehow spilled on the floor. And they spell the Russian word for wardrobe. It does seem to be an unambiguous pointer to you, Naruhodo-san, as you were sleeping in there. But to be truly ambiguous, it should have just spelled out my name, don't you think? Well, either way, one fact remains. 
It's hard to imagine that Kazuma-sama would have written his last words, or word, in Russian. Which begs the question of who did write it. All the books provided for the passengers occupying this cabin, neatly arranged on the shelf. They were all over the place when we first looked around, if you remember. Oh yes, and you tidied them up, didn't you? You have to look after the ship's, ship's property. Unruly behavior in the cabins lead to damage. But it really wasn't me who knocked them over. Well, anyway, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up. I can't relax when their things are untidy. Uh, let's talk with him. Um, you! Where did you go? Oh, sorry, I just went to the next door cabin to investigate. Why? Who gave you permission for these? Um, well, in spe- I mean, Seaman Hosonaga did. <laughs> that new Japanese, was he? Later, I will roll him into ball and throw him in cold room. Woo! He's gone back to guarding the door. I hope Inspector Hosonaki doesn't find himself in too much trouble on our account. He's really gone out of his way to help us, hasn't he? When we get back to Japan, we'll have to take him for a steak. Take him for a steak at Lakarna Ball. That could be a very long time from now, Narahodo-san. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Burya. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. So by bringing her pet on board, Miss Pavlova has broken the rules. She called it her friend, didn't she? Yes, although we don't know what form this friend takes as yet. I'm almost certain that whatever it is, it's inside the traveling case of her cabin. Hmm, a friend. There's more to this than it seems, I think. I think we're just going to investigate all around here one more time, just in case something new happens. It really is such a beautiful color, this glass. It looks like whatever it, it was has broken clean in two. But the other half is nowhere to be seen. And then there's the brick-colored mark. Which is shoe polish, according to that great detective you seem to know all about. I suppose it must be from Kazuma-sama's shoes. Maybe, but what I'd like to know is, how can the detective be so sure that it's shoe polish and not something else? Because he's a great detective, of course. That's hardly a reason, is it? That's my dinner from last night. Roast chicken was really tasty. I think we already read it. Bungie, you inform that dog. I think we can leave the room now. I don't know, does that mean poor Kazuma-sama is going to slide in the belly? It's just horrible. Uh... Yeah, I think we can leave. We investigated everything as much as possible here. All right. Ah! Look now, Rohoto san. Seaman Stroganov is gone. Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who's always crossing his arms and glaring at us. Ugh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. La -la. Did you hear that? It sounded like someone singing. -la 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 -la. Oh. I did it the great detective way. It's caroling. I know that lark like voice. Well, never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. We must seize it. Let's get inside Miss Pavlova's cabin while we can and investigate. Definitely. Before that stringy knot crewman comes back. It's Stroganov, not stringy knot. 
Right. <laughs> All right, quick, get in. Oh, it's open. It's open. Uh, there's clothes now in here. Meh, Miss, Miss Pavlova isn't back yet. Sato-san. Oh, where's she gone? Uh, hey, what are you doing? Those are her private things. It's not a moment to waste now, Hodo-san. We must investigate as quickly as we can. I suppose you're right. For Cosmo's sake. Not just for Kazuma-sama. What do you mean? It can't be long now until you arrive at port in Hong Kong. I don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. Really? We must solve this case, Naruhodo-san, by ourselves if we have to. Yes, we will. Alright, let's investigate. Naruhodo-san, are you there? Sorry, I'm right here, yes. Why? Oh, good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe when I wasn't looking. There's no place like home. Believe me, I don't have some strange compulsion to jump inside every road wardrobe I see, you know. Well, anyway, I'm not sure anyone can fit inside this one. It's full of beautiful outfits. I suppose they're all stage costumes? Hmm, I was rather hoping we might find Miss Pavlova's friend hiding in there. But no such luck. What's up with the grill? So this ventilator connects to Cosmo's cabin next door. Yes, although what a fool sh a shipbuilder must be to open a ventilator to another room. Ah, maybe it's so that if there's a gas leak next door, the occupant of this cabin would notice and raise the alarm. Or the occupant of both cabins would die of gas poisoning. Hmm, that is a possibility. Anyway, last night, Cosmo wrote that he saw a speckled band coming out of this ventilator. Alright, the case is open. Oh my! Miss Pavlova's case is open! Completely empty inside, but according to the great detective's great deduction, she was hiding her special friend in there. Yes, a friend that she had kept secret. Because you're not allowed to bring animals on board the SS Burra. I wonder what kind of animals she had in there. And more to the point, where it is now. All these books have toppled over together. Look, every single one. Do you think that's a, that's a guy on the seat, perhaps? He's toppled over, too. It's exactly the same as the bookcase next door. The Cosmos cabin. Perhaps. Perhaps Miss Pavlova was practicing a difficult ballet pose and fell against the bookshelf? I don't know. Would she really be practicing ballet on the same night she ran away from her ballet company? Alright then. It must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked them all over in a fit of rage? Not everything bad that happens on the ship is because of me, you know. Well, anyway, I'll set them all straight again in here, too. I don't like seeing things in disarray. Uh. At her desk. There are just a few books on the desk. Nothing else by the looks of it. Well, Miss Pavlova only ran away from the ballet last night. She's hardly occupied this cabin for any time at all. That's true. I wonder what kind of book she likes to read. Hmm, let me see. Yes, yes, I see. It would seem that Miss Pavlova enjoys reading... Books written in Russian. Thanks. I think I probably already knew that. It's rude to ask too much of people, now we're san I can't even remember that.
I wonder what this little saucer is doing on the floor. Yeah, so it doesn't quite look like it's been dropped. More like it was put there deliberately. Ah, do you think? Do you think there could be a leak on the roof just above here? What? A leak? Is this ship quite safe? I'm, I'm sure that even if there's a little leak on the roof, it doesn't mean the whole ship is going to sink. No, no, you're right. Of course you're right. She's really trying to persuade herself, isn't she? I suppose every cabin has a waste paper basket. Shall we have a little look and see what's been thrown away? Now hold us on. It's poor etiquette to go s sifting through someone's rubbish, you know? Ugh! Those eyes. She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. My lord. There's hardly anything in here at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. Yeah. Tea, I think. Yep. It would seem this teapot is empty. Hmm. So the natural conclusion is that the Russians are a very thirsty people. Or, because Miss Pavlova only came into this cabin last night, she hasn't had the chance to make any tea yet? I mean, it could be either. It's definitely that they're excessively thirsty. I'd lay a thousand one. I'd, I'd lay a thousand to one on it. You're rather... What? Obstinate, aren't you, Naruhoto san? Uh, what else can I mess with? In here. Just that, 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 that. That, that. I haven't messed with this yet. Ah, yes! They're displayed in this cabin, too. Look, the SS Korea has rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons, yada yada yada. Fucking yada. We know this. I suppose Miss Pavlova realized that she needed to keep the contents of the case a secret after she read this. Her special friend, I mean. I wonder where her friend has disappeared to now. She's probably having fun exploring the ship, I imagine. I just hope Seaman Stroganoff doesn't find it and throw it overboard. Oh, yes, so do I. I investigated thoroughly, but can't find anything out of this place. Anything else I can investigate in here before looking at that? There's one of these next to the bed in Cosmos Cabin, too. Yes, it's a bell cord. I can't resist. She barely hesitated there, and she gave it a good tug, too. No, I didn't actually expect anyone to come. We don't want them to. We're trying to investigate in secret. The last thing to really investigate is this door. This cabin door has the same simple sort of bolted latch that our cabin door has. If the bolt's drawn across, there's no way anybody could enter the cabin from outside. Yes, it's not a particularly heavy-duty bolt, is it? Uh, but still, it wouldn't slide across on it of its own accord, would it? No, and the door is made of metal, so there's no chance of Trigger using magnets to unbolt it from the outside. Well, that's what I was just about to say. Could they have just used magnets? Apparently not. And it seals up perfectly, too. No stop. To stop any seawater coming in like that kind of matters when you have vents everywhere. So you couldn't use the method of you told me of passing a thread through a crack under the closed door either. I seem to know a lot of tricks for opening doors. I'm starting to see why they suspect me. Is there really nothing else to look at? Uh, 
Seriously, nothing else? All right, then. Let's get out of here. Cosmos cabin? Nope, all right. What the fuck are we missing? I knew we would come into some weird point. So we're trying to investigate secretly. Nothing there. Nothing about the wardrobe. Nothing there, there. Carpet. There has to be some evidence that we find in here, right? Has to be. Uh Mail Far Eastern, one and type past two. And dangling from the ventilated grill. must be remnants of the glue you used to stick the paper seal on the wardrobe. That's right, it was pulverized rice. Pulverized rice. Yes, I pulverized some of the rice for my evening meal, even though I, it broke my heart. Broke your heart? What do you mean? Remember, I'm a stowaway on this ship. All I had to eat was Cosmos leftovers. Even a couple of grains of rice could have meant the difference between life and death. Oh my, it must have been awful for you, Naruhoto san. But I have some glue with me, as it seems. You're welcome to use it this evening. Oh, thank you very much. I thought we were going to get the rice and use it as food. Or something. Uh, I guess that's not going to happen either. I'm just checking some stuff. I really don't know what to do or what to look for. I'm at a loss. Uh, I think I'll come back once I find something. I'll scour every inch of this place. Yeah, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. And uh, I decided to head outside into the uh, passageway to see what I could uh, find and uh, yeah he's right here wow could have just went to look for him you know me being the idiot that I am uh. oh it's Mr. Sholmes look wow you never know when he's gonna turn up next do you seems to be stealing a look at something that he's singing to him to himself. I can't I didn't even know what that said. I just spoke words. 
Tra la 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 la. I did it the great detective way. Still singing. Do you think he hasn't noticed us? But he's simply in extremely high spirits. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when the yard bit off more than it could chew. And through it all, when there was doubt, it's lucky her luck was about. Um, excuse me? I solved it all and I stood tall, I did it the great detective way. Mr. Shones! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh, what is it? You want to fight? Hmm? Honestly, interfering a fellow when he's sinking. <laughs> and I was just about to reach the climactic finish. Sorry, I thought you were never gonna stop, so I figured now is a good time as any. Jesus. I love his boxing. <laughs> I very nearly dropped you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks. Alright, I get the picture. Now, could you put those fists away? I love this game. Mr. Sholmes, you seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Ah, yes, that. I was immersed in study of the ship's log, as penned by the stocky-built crewman who's usually on guard here. Oh, yes, the ship's log. And did you find out anything useful, Farmer? Well, after 2 a.m. this morning, the majority of the entries are blank. Which means that there was nothing to report. Nothing to note happened, so... <laughs> You truly are a student from the land of the rising sun. You've been utterly blinded by it. <laughs> Sorry. Your logic, my boy, is inverted. But whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Observe the other pages, and all shall become clear. It would seem the same crewman of an off-stand sentry in this first-class passageway. And he has almost... And he has an almost religious... Oh my god, religious practice of recording nothing to report every half hour. Oh, he writes that in every in every 30 minutes? Nothing to report? Precisely. He simply, put simply, the seaman writes nothing to report when there is just that. And yet, the ship's log from last night is largely blank. He didn't even write nothing to report. Do you mean... Yes, there, was, there were circumstances afoot last night, which led to the seaman being absent from his post. What kind of circumstances? What happened? Now that, remind, that remains a mystery for me, but we can be sure something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribing nothing to report in the log. These are important details. I would stake my life on it. You, you must log this ship's log into your metal file. The ship's log is now part of evidence. Thank God. Now that now that deduction was worthy of a great detect. Ah, you're starting to understand what my way is, I see. What makes Sholmes Sholmes? Brilliant! <laughs> ah. Ooh. Ouch. What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, don't worry yourself. I seem to be afflicted with a throbbing head this morning for some reason. Nothing more. We all do. Wait. Huh? Well, my friends. Until our next encounter. That's suspicious. Still singing to himself. I can hear it as he wanders down the passageway. Is something wrong, Sasato san? Sorry. Moving around, guys. You seem lost in thought. It's just. Well, I feel the same. Sorry. Ever since I woke this morning, I've had something of a headache. Sort of. 
continuous throbbing. Oh, you too? Interesting. Very intriguing. Uh, let's go back in Miss Pavlova's cabin. Ah, what's that? The alarm's going off. Oh no. Get out! Uh oh. Shut down the engines immediately! Vessel sighted at quarter mile four! Full stop! Hard to starboard! All hands! Brace for impact! What the fuck? Are we about to get rammed? What the? I think we're about to crash into another ship. What? I I can't stand. Sasato san, hold on to me! What? What? Sasato san, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I I think I'm fine. Thank you, Naruhodo san. What happened? Huh? Wait. Wait! Is that what happened last night? Did Kazuma snap his neck because of the ship tilt? And he landed on something, probably the chicken bone. Oh my god. Don't tell me that's actually what happened. It looks like we avoided a collision. I think... Yes, the ship has come to a stop. Stop. Oh my goodness. What about you, Naruhodo-san? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Ah, oh, fuck. Hello? Is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance! Oh, that sounds like... Oh, it's, it's, it's Hosanaga! Inspector Hosanaga. Is that you in there, Naruhodo-san? Unbolt the door. Quickly! What? The bolt? <sighs> Look at that. The door's bolted. Did you do that, Sasada-san? No, I didn't touch it. Well, that's strange. How did... And... Look at all the books. They're just like they were before again. Now, hold us on. Aren't you gonna open the door and let the inspector in? I'd better tidy this place up first. Our violent emergency stop has solved one mystery, at least, in a very vivid, in a very vivid way. But I knew that what awaited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I hurried around, tidying up the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. Oh boy. Oh boy. I think we'll leave it there. 53 minutes, a new shortest time for this series so far. So, uh... What the fuck? There's part three to an investigation. Yeah, okay. We're gonna leave it there. Next time, we're gonna be hopefully finishing up the investigation. We're gonna probably get kicked in the ass. And, uh... Yeah. We'll see how it goes. So tune in next time to find out what happens after this. And trust me, I'm going to keep recording these because these are way more fun than I thought they were going to be. In this case, even. Sorry there's not much to do or look at. But that's just how this game rolls sometimes. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.